Joining me on the line right now is Showtime boxing analyst Steve Farhood. Steve, how are you doing? Corey, how you doing? Thanks for having me on again. It is a, uh, a busy weekend of Showtime fights to, uh, to wrap up the year, but we had uh, a big one this past weekend headlined by Amir Khan and Devin Alexander. Uh, Steve, would you agree that this was probably the most complete and most impressive performance of Khan's career? I think so, uh, given the quality of the opposition. I have to say, and Lord knows I get plenty wrong, but this one I was right on. I thought it was a great style matchup for Khan. Um, uh, Devin Alexander is a boxer, but he's smaller than Khan, not as rangy, not as fast. I just thought all the pieces in the puzzle fit for Khan, and sure enough, he went out there and did what he did. And, hey, you got to give the guy credit. He's done what he can do to elevate himself, to get rid of some of the ghosts of, of his, you know, of knockouts past, and, and he's trying to get a fight with Floyd, and he's done everything right. Now, whether that happens or not, of course, is a separate question. Yeah, I mean, it, it did seem like, uh, as you mentioned, a, a great style matchup for him because it seems like if Khan is put into a fight where it is simply a speed matchup, he's probably going to win every single time. And, and Alexander didn't offer another, another dimension that was going to trouble him in any way. Yeah, exactly. I think watching the broadcast, for those who've, who heard it, you heard Paulie Malinaji speak so glowingly of Khan's boxing ability, and he knows firsthand. And Paulie, you know, say what you want about Paulie as a fighter, no power, yes, but lots of speed. And he, nobody beat Paulie Malinaji like Amir Khan did. He just outboxed him from here to tomorrow and punished him. So I think that, you know, Khan's skills are clearly what they are. I've always felt he'd give Floyd trouble, um, maybe for a whole fight, maybe for part of a fight. Uh, but again, you know, maybe he gets the fight, maybe he doesn't. Uh, now, quickly on that, uh, on Friday, uh, you were given uh, another interview with uh, with Floyd Mayweather. It seems like every time that Floyd has anything significant to say, he's going to you. You're like the, the Howard Cosell to, uh, <laughs> to Floyd Mayweather now. Well, it, this was pretty much Floyd talking. I didn't do much talking. I held the <laughs> microphone and let him go, and um, I had a feeling he was going to give us something good because he said to me before the show, uh, I'm going to give you something really good tonight. You know, So I, I, I had a feeling he was going to say something about Pacquiao. And sure enough, I guess you know, part of it is realistic. There are talks, and part of it is a PR game. You know, Bob Arum speaks a lot publicly, and um, – I don't think Floyd wanted the public to think of him as the bad guy in not making this fight. So maybe negotiations go well, maybe they won't, but Floyd had his say. And uh, I think he backed himself into a little bit of a corner, which is a good thing for fight fans, because now Floyd's on the record of saying he wants to fight, and if it doesn't happen, you know, he didn't look so good. Is that to say that you're even a percentile more hopeful that this fight might get made eventually? Yeah, about a percentile is exactly what it is, <laughs> because uh, you know, again, this, this part of his part of his thing was a public relations spiel, you know. And um, but but the fact is, when you have very high level people like the head of CBS and 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 you know uh, Bob Arum speaking, that's a good sign. And when the money is what is there to be made, it's just difficult for me as a longtime fight observer who's seen every big fight that could bring this kind of money in made. It's very hard to picture it not being made. I mean, it's a miracle that it hasn't been made. It's a miracle that it's still alive to be made. And maybe, you know, they're going to have to talk through the holidays, but if they can get it done, uh, I think we'll all be very happy. Well, let's talk about uh, some somewhat less significant fights, but still very significant fights <laughs> nonetheless, uh, in Washington to close out the year uh, on December 20th. Uh, headlined by Jesus Cuellar taking on Ruben Tamayo. Uh, Cuellar, a guy who's been uh, a little bit of a revelation over the past 12 months, now finally getting some respect and, and starting to be mentioned amongst those top featherweights. Uh, does Ruben Tamayo, a guy who's been stopped a couple of times in the past uh, when he stepped up, uh, does he offer any uh, any kind of difficulty to Cuellar in this main event? Well, he shouldn't. I mean, this is a fight for Cuellar. You know, Cuellar's a legit top 10 featherweight uh, with wins over Rico Ramos. and He beat Claudio Marrero when Marrero was undefeated and then, of course, knocking out a very faded Juan Manuel Lopez. He's legit top 10. Uh, Tamayo is a, a reasonable test, not a big test. It's not a move-up fight. Uh, Tamayo's, I think, a little smaller, and uh, he's a tough guy. He's, he likes to fight. So it should be a good fight. Cuellar's a very heavy-handed, aggressive southpaw. Tamayo's a southpaw as well. 
Uh, so as long as it lasts, I think it'll be a pretty entertaining fight and somewhat of a showcase for Koya. Uh, now, before we went on the air, you actually mentioned something. There is a change to this card uh, that Anthony Peterson, Yakubu Amidou is going to be off and that Gary Russell Jr. Uh, will be on the main telecast now against Christopher Martin. Uh, you know, a- after Russell's last fight, and we just talked about Khan Alexander as just being a really bad style matchup for Devin Alexander, one he wasn't going to win. Gary Russell Jr. was in one of those fights last time out against a guy with long arms who was uh, almost as fast as him. He just wasn't going to win out. This, I imagine, is going to be a little bit more favorable for him against Chris Martin. Oh, yeah, of course. Chris Martin is, uh, the fight will be his featherweight. Chris Martin is really a junior featherweight. Um, we have to understand, this is, this is the first fight of the rest of Gary Russell's life. He's not going to take somebody really tough. Chris Martin got stopped his last fight. So, you know, it's, it's a comeback fight for Russell. Um, the problem with Russell is the last fight against Lomachenko, it was an indictment against how Russell had been raised as a boxer. You know, it really was. I mean, he, he just took a lot of relatively easy fights. He's so talented that he, was, he outclassed all his opponents. Then he fought a guy in Lomachenko, one of the greatest amateurs ever, of course, and, and really wasn't all that competitive, despite what one of the cards may have said. So, you know, he's starting over. I'll be interested in the fighter interviews to talk to him about whether he thinks his approach was wrong. My guess is he won't say it was. Um, but now he starts again, and how is he going to take this second stage of his career? It'll be interesting to hear. Uh, the last time you guys did fighter interviews with Gary Russell, and they, you know, they did the little uh, profile of him. He was wearing his pajamas. Maybe he can put some clothing on for this one. I hope he doesn't wear his pajamas in the ring. <laughs> you know, it's the other guy that's supposed to go to sleep, not him. <laughs> uh, speaking of going to sleep, uh, Julius Jackson is going to be on this card as well, and a guy who we haven't really seen too much of, but. Obviously, when you're of the uh, the family lineage of the Hawk, uh, it is presumed that you have some knockout power. Uh, now, he's going to be taking on Jonathan Nelson uh, in his main step up, really, when he left Arkansas. Um, he was outclassed. Do you think, it, it, is Julius Jackson for real, or is he kind of a, another guy with, some, uh, with a puffed-up record? Well, you know, he's fought all over the world. He hasn't fought very good opposition. I don't think he's the fighter his brother, John Jackson, is. Um, Obviously, he's not the fighter his dad was, but then again, who is? So I'll um, be very interesting to see. I've seen a lot of tape on the guy. He's, he's a heavy-handed, tall guy, not good balance, but strong and physical and tries to knock you out. So I think it'll be a reasonably, uh, you know, reasonably entertaining fight. Ju- um, Jonathan Nelson, more of a boxer. So this is Julius Williams, uh, Julius Jackson, excuse me, his chance to make a name for himself in America, and uh, let's see what he's got. But I, I look forward to seeing Julian more than I look forward to seeing Julius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and lastly, uh, now we don't know exactly who his opponent is going to be, but I guess we're assuming that uh, the J-Rock, Julian Williams, is going to be on the card, uh, Edgar Ortega uh, off this card. Uh, I was super impressed with J-Rock in the early part of, uh, of 2014 with his wins over Freddy Hernandez uh, and then in stopping Michael Medina. Uh, the fight against Eliza Gonzalez was a, a bit of a snoozer. Uh, where do you fall on Julian Williams? Because I thought after the Medina win, uh, he was really knocking on the door of maybe being able to contend with those top 10 guys at 154, but I'm not so sure right now. Well, I'm big on him, very big on him. I, I like the way he's doing things. You know, he's going about things the right way. He's taking fights that seem to make sense at the time. And let's not forget that Hugo Centeno looked really good scoring a knockout in his last fight. And Julian Williams was going to beat Hugo Centeno until there was a butt that stopped the fight yeah. uh, a year ago or so. So uh, I like Jackson. I mean, excuse me. I like uh, Julian Williams. I, I'm not sure who he's going to fight or if he'll even be on the card now. We have to find out who the opponent is. That'll probably be taken care of today. But I look forward to seeing him. I'm more anxious to see him than almost anyone else on the card because I think he's knocking on the door of contendership. Uh, I was at that last fight. He didn't look great, but once he accelerated, he took care of business. And uh, Stephen Edwards' his trainer is a bright young trainer from Philly, and I just think Julian Williams has it all. And it's a good division to, to be in at this point because there are a lot of good junior middleweights, and uh, he's one of them. Uh, now, quickly, Steve, uh, I'm going to be heading to, uh, to Quebec City uh, to take care of the international broadcast for the Adonis Stevenson card, uh, which will be on Showtime in the United States. Uh, Adonis Stevenson taking on Dmitry Sikotsky. Uh Do you see Adonis being in any danger here, or is this more of a, uh, a Christmas bonus fight uh, for Superman before he hit the holidays? Well, I'll put it this way. I think every fight is a little bit of a dangerous fight for Stevenson because his chin is not the best. We know that. Uh, Suhatsky is an aggressive fighter. He's pretty much a legit top ten guy. He beat Mohamedy, who, who, who is, has some good wins. So maybe in the bottom half of the top ten, top half of the second ten, but uh, reasonable test, not the toughest test. And, of course, Stevenson 
is exciting. He's always exciting because he's a huge puncher with a somewhat vulnerable chin, and uh, we saw that last time with Von Farah. So I think he's just worth watching because he's Adonis Stevenson. Now, obviously looming overhead with Adonis is always going to be the Sergei Kovalev fight, it's the fight that everyone wants at, at 175, and Adonis is now, in, in, in the same way that Floyd has uh, with Manny Pacquiao, has kind of broken his silence when it comes to Kovalev, and he says, I want the fight, I, I need everyone else to figure out the TV and the contracts, but I want to make that fight. Uh, are you on the same page as me? Do you believe him? Because I I usually want to believe that men who fight other people for a living are not actually afraid of anyone, and that really the things getting in the way of Stevenson Kovalev uh, are those other exterior factors, and, and it certainly isn't whether or not Adonis wants that fight. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it, it, you can even draw a parallel with Floyd and Manny. You know, people who think Floyd is scared of Manny or was scared of Manny. Fighters at this level aren't scared of anybody. And there's another factor to think about. Adonis Stevenson is not the youngest guy in the world. I think he's in his mid-30s or mid to late-30s. And where is he going to make money? You know, I mean, the, the, the Hopkins fight is gone. He could still fight Hopkins, but obviously it wouldn't be anywhere near as big if Bernard continues to fight. So, yeah, I mean, how much would he make versus Kovalev versus anybody else? So that's a factor, too. And uh, I'd like to see it happen. There's obviously politics, TV networks, and everything comes into play. Um, I think Kovalev will probably fight Pascal first, but we'll see. I mean, maybe maybe this better BF guy is the guy that – that Stevenson will, uh, you know, show down against because Bedebiev is going to be making his American TV debut on the same card.